Welcome to the Senior League Baseball World Series coming to you from Easley, Carolina. Welcome to the J.B. Owen Sports Complex where today we have the first of matchups and it features maybe the heavy favorites, the vaunted Cabal Little League from Stad Curacao, the Caribbean region champs facing one of yesterday's winners, the Netherlands, Kettermerlin Little League from Harlem, winners yesterday over Canada. Highly anticipated matchup. Winner advances to the international bracket semifinal. Here are those favorites from Curacao, the Pabao Little League. Winners of the Caribbean Regional earlier this month. They steamrolled the competition, went 7-0 and defeated their island rivals in a sense. Pariba Little League, those two programs, two of the best in uh, in the Caribbean right now. So here they are. They find themselves facing a Netherlands team that won yesterday. And right there, you see one of the hitters in the order for Curacao. That's Curly Martha. Dangerous, very productive hitter. He is the leadoff batter for this Caribbean team. The Netherlands, meanwhile, rolled Canada yesterday. They won 11 to 1. And they actually defeated Canada in five minutes, winning due to the run rule regulation. They were up by 10 after five innings. So, how did they get here? They won the Europe Africa region by going 4 and 1 against the competition. A pivotal win against. The Little League team from Verona, Italy, was the head-to-head -head tiebreaker that sent Netherlands to this championship. And they certainly announced themselves with quite a bit of quite a bit of volition yesterday. They scored runs early and often, thanks in large part to Tristan Kyer. Who had three hits and several RPs. He drove in a couple of runs early in the game and then later on added another here. The Netherlands had a 5-0 lead after two innings and then ultimately built a large 11-0 lead before eventually winning in five innings 11-1 over Canada. And so the man who knocked in a handful of runs yesterday, three to be exact, is now on the mound. That is Tristan Kyer. He is the 15-year-old from Harlem. As head coach Sherman Gario calls him as versatile as they get. Yesterday at the plate and now today, one of the aces of the staff in an incredibly important game. If you win this one, you advance to the international bracket semifinal game. One win away from the international championship. The loser, though, heads to the elimination bracket. And you have to get your way back. Facing elimination every step of the way in order to reach the national championship game. So here's the lineup that Kyer faces today. Again, it's a very vaunt Curacao order. That went 7-0 in their regional championship against a very competitive challenging field as the Caribbean regional always is and their average margin three was 10 runs curly Martha there right at the top followed by Jerdrick Profar Andro Trump that trio expected at the plate in the top half of this first inning it's an early start time today we were originally expected to go at uh, 10 a.m. but with some uh, possible poor weather in the afternoon. The scheduled first hit pitch time was moved up an hour. This is the defense for the Netherlands around Kyer. Javon Macario is the catcher once again behind the plate. The only real defensive change is yesterday's starter, Joris Mainsman, is now in left. And Leifi Vondergrove, who is the shortstop for the Netherlands today, he moves from left field to of course, that's Kyer's position, and so he's on the mound today for the Europe Africa region champs. This should be a very compelling game. 
two physical and, and really dynamic teams go head to head. And we're underway. First pitch at 9.05 local time. So it is a very early start time in Easley, South Carolina. Martha takes that breaking pitch once again in on the hands. And so Kyer, a strike thrower, doesn't walk too many hitters, is in a favorable position here. From the stretch, 0-2 to Martha. This time he picks up on that breaking ball and pounds it foul. It's 70 degrees at first pitch, although the weather is going to get warmer and steamier as it plays out and the rest of the weekend and week. Day two of this tournament, we crown champion in six days on Saturday the 5th, 02. Martha bounces that one over to short. This is Vondergroff. And a nice stretch by Geeling at first. There's one away. Two teams, again, they're very physical. They're very versatile clubs. And this was certainly a matchup. A lot of folks thought were going to be very competitive if these two got matched up on day two. And so there's the versatility of Vondergroff yesterday in left field. Today, short. No problem on the first play. Here's Zerdrick Profar. Fouls the fastball away. Profar from Willemstad. And yeah, his favorite baseball player is older. Oh, <laughs> Jerickson, who's Colorado's leadoff hitter. Uh, Rocky starting left fielder. Back on the ground once again to Vondergroff. Mishandles it. And Curacao has a runner on. So it'll be an error in this top of the first inning. The Netherlands played clean baseball on the field in the one win over Canada. Vondergroff had that one, but he just couldn't secure it cleanly. Now batting the, third eight, the meat of the Caribbean order coming up. This is Deshandro Trump. He's a great fielder over at third. So his sometimes overshadows how good of a defensive player he is as well. Pabao Little League from Willemstad. Oh, they got him at first. Profar just a little too casual and nonchalant on the return of the base paths. And so Tristan Kyer, oh, he was yesterday's shortstop for the Netherlands. I'll make up for the error from my of my teammate. Wow, it was that half chopping step of the right foot. And you wonder there if you dive in, you're easily safe. That's a mistake on the heels of the Netherlands mistake. So with two out, the 0-1 to Trump is tapped foul. Now both of these clubs, again, they, they are they normally play mistake free baseball. They execute very well. A couple of older teams as well. A lot of 16-year-olds on the roster. And an age bracket that features largely 15 and 16-year-olds. 0-2, wave and a miss. Kyer with an excellent top half of the first inning. One error commit behind. Picks off a runner, strikes another out. And the Dutch hit next. The Netherlands, the regional champs from the Europe-Africa region earlier this month, won yesterday. They overwhelmed 11-1 to and won that game thanks to the run rule in five innings. This is their batting order. They are the nominated home team today. After the coin flip, <laughs> early day, and it's, uh, there's the batting order. Colin Brewers is looking to give the... Fish bump there to Gershon Mogan, the catcher who will work with Arshino Martina and denied that time. So it's the Dutch on battle. Martina, the five foot ten lefty, delivers the first pitch, misses up high and loses the cap process. And away we go in the home first. This Netherlands team worked a whole bunch of walks, only nine hits, but they still scored 11 runs, had a lot of batters on base. 
This team stole five bases collectively. Brewers walk twice, matter of fact. Takes a strike and it counts one and two. Now Martina, you can already see, brings a little bit of pop. He's got some zip on the fastball. He's a 15-year-old from Willemstad. Finds deals. And according to head coach Quincy Virginia, he's got a fastball that he can run up to 81, 80, even 83. Brings the fastball this time, it misses away. And again, this should be a very high level pitching matchup. Uh, Curacao did not play yesterday, they had the bye, so they're a fresh team. Off. Outside edge, that's a called third strike. Brewers goes down looking. And a perfect spot that time by Martina. Selwyn Herkman's up next. Now batting the designated hitter, number one, Selwyn Herkman. And strike Todd Saxe uh, granted Martina earlier in the at bat. So that one was there. Piece of the plate. First pitch to Herkman's is in for a strike. Four man up in crew. Saxe behind the plate today. Darren Weiss is over at first. Ricky Delgado, second base umpire, and Bill Baylog is over at third. O2. That fastball is just a little too far off the outside edge. It's the Dutch on Dutch battle, of course. Now is a constituent country of the Netherlands. Outside corner again. And Martina gets Herkman's looking. So he paints the corner twice to retire the first two. And so Saxe has been very consistent calling that outside corner a few times here in the first inning. Here's Leifie Vondergroff. Fastball center cut for a strike. Martina certainly has a bright future. He's one of the youngest on the team. He turned 15 just a month ago. That hook, it carved the letters to the count evens. He's got nasty stuff. It's not just the ball. It brings that big 12 to 6 hook as well. Wave and a miss, strike two. Martin trying to strike out the side. And this is a fastball just velocity wise that the Netherlands did not see at all yesterday against Canada. Martina deals. So he saves that two seam fastball. There for Vondergroff, and that's the pitch that Virginia says is his best, undoubtedly. Three hitter waits, swings, and hits that one down the line. I mentioned Curacao didn't play yesterday. They had to buy to day two, and again, that's all just determined at random. Six teams on each side. So you have six. United States region champs, six international champs. Two teams on each bracket. They get that bye to day two. And this season, Curacao got one of them. Payoff with two out. One's fouled off the mask of Mo. Martina needs a new cap. It keeps falling off. Every time he throws his body forward to release the pitch. Way high, got away from Mark that time. So the Netherlands has a base runner in the first inning. Twan Geeling is the cleanup hitter for Kennemerlin Little League. Kennemerlin, the Little League Association in Harlem. It's about 20, 30 minutes outside of Amsterdam and then 10 minutes from the beach. Part of the country's border there, right, right on the North Sea. 
Fastball just a touch away to Geeling. He drove in three runs yesterday. 16-year-old from Hofdorp. That runner's on every time he stepped. To th that was the story yesterday for the Dutch. Netherlands runners reach safely in just five innings. Again, they won in five due to the run rule. Her takes off. Geeling swings, punches it foul. So the hit and run was on that time for the Netherlands. Martina has two strikes on another hitter. He's the first two looking, let Von de Graaf get away. Now he's coming home to the lefty. Run on the move, throw is wide of second, trickles into center field. So Von der Graaf has the first of maybe many stolen bases for the Netherlands. They stole five yesterday as a team in just five in. And I'm not sure a perfect throw for Mogan gets Von. Maybe it does. <laughs> that one was just wide. Twenty-third pitch of the year for Martina. Coming to Geeling with a man in scoring position. Get some swinging at the changeup. Martina saved that one and used it at the right time. He allows the walk, but he strikes out three. Martina bringing some good stuff in the first. The excitement of the World Series be downloaded in the new Little League World Series app. So fans can view schedules, watch highlights, plan out their experience by using the Little League World Series app. Make sure to download today. It's Dutch on Dutch battle. Plenty of Netherlands orange in the stands for this matchup between Harlem's Kennemerlin Little League and then a bow Little League from Willemstad, Curacao, a Dutch constituent country. Great start for the Caribbean champs here in the second inning. Payson Riviere jumps on that fastball from Tristan Kyer, gorges it through the left side. So a leadoff base runner for the Caribbean. This is a very talented, hot-hitting order that went 7-0, steamrolled the Caribbean region earlier this month. They punched their ticket to the World Series on July 1st. One runner was on in the first inning for Curacao. So far reached on an error, but then he was picked off. So Kyer has displayed a quick move already. Here's Clay Winkler. Bat, the number five hole. That time was fooled by the curve. Winkler, 16-year-old from Willemstad, he's a big Aaron Judge fan, and he's got a judge presence on the right side of the plate. There's the 0-1. Foul back. Counts nothing at two. Both of these pitchers are, according to their coaches, pretty much the aces of the staffs. Kyer and Martina each can really run it up to 80, 81, maybe even 83. They've got some low 80s heat in the arsenal. And we saw some solid stuff in the first inning. 0-2. Winkler gets, uh, gets underneath the breaking pitch. Willem on it. And there's one away. And we really do have a wonderful pitching match set up today in the first game of four to get things going here on day two. We've already had several teams to the elimination side, uh, both the U.S. and international sides of the bracket. 
The winner of this game goes to the international semifinal tomorrow. And Martinez. He's got the Cincinnati Reds batting helmet. Which is somewhat of a conflict of interest. He's got a, an older brother who's now in the Dodgers organization. 1-0 hits the outside edge for a strike. <laughs> unless, uh, unless something has happened uh, here at the trade deadline in, uh, in regard to the Martinez family that I've missed. is on the move. Uh, that one was fouled away. This vaunted Pabau Little League program at Willemstad. Uh, they, they have, it's no hyperbole. They have certainly garnered a international reputation for how quality this program is. Martinez was one of the starters on the 2019 Curacao Little League World Series team that reached the championship game in Williamsport that year. So half of this roster are players that were on that team. They know what it's like to compete and win at this stage. Martinez drills this one left. It's another base hit. So Riviere and Martinez both with impressive base hits off of Kyer. Nathan Castillo up next. And that one was roped. Fastball elevated a little too high up in the zone there. And right in this is wheelhouse. Castillo, another from that 2019 team that reached the championship in Williamsport. Kyer, ready to go, finds the outside edge. Rather, it's off the corner. Willemstad and Kershaw, a baseball crazed community. That is the national sport in a sense. And so all of these players from a young age groomed to play the game at a high level. Great passion for this game everywhere. 2 0. Kyer misfires. The runners stay at first and second. And it really does feel like this Curacao team is maybe the unequivocal favorites, especially on the international side. Trying to find the zone. Throws to second. They've got the man picked, but it's wide. Cairo Hazel reached for it at second base. He was not there in time. And Riviere dot. Bullet. He winds up at third. You see Hazel starting to take that towards second. And Riviere probably thought, well, Hazel is out of the my eye, nowhere near the base, so I don't have to retreat that much. So the error, the second charge to the Dutch, now has runners at first and third. That one's outside. Castillo works the walk. They're loaded for the Caribbean with one out. No batting, the catcher, number four, Gersha Mocha. There's the very athletic and speedy catcher, Mogan. Strike on the outside corner, nothing. Curacao with the bases loaded in the top of the second. Consequential game that's one of these two to the international semifinal on Tuesday. There's the breaking pitch. That's in for a strike. He used a couple of times effectively in the first inning. But Martinez and Riviere have pounced on his fastball here in the second. 
There's the breaking pitch again, and he gets Mogan to pop that one into shallow. Runner may tag. Schulte to Horst makes the catch at his throw, even though it was fine, it holds the runner at third. Two out. So Schultz or Horst under. He was quick getting it to the plate, and that's all that was needed to hold Riviere. One zero pitch to the number nine hitter, Ferenz Wooters. That one misses low. Wooters, the 16-year-old from St. Michael. Let's say. Just right outside of Willem's dad. And sensing the importance of this moment, Sherman Gario is going to make it out to the mound. Base is loaded for Curacao in the top second. And an important moment for the Caribbean champs to. Strike first. You got the second baseman, Hazel, part of the conversation there at the end of the conversation. Wooters waits on the 2 0. Balls, no strikes, and nowhere to put Wooter, Wooters. Let's see if he's got the green light. Swings and chops it foul. So that helps Kai. As he go back to the breaking pitch. Fastball pounded away. And Kyer has climbed back to load the count. Big spot for Curacao. Base on the second. Payoff coming. Swing. That's in the air. Down the line. Hit hard. Von half on the run. It's a fair ball. One run comes home. Martinez around third, gets the wave, Gilling's throw is late, and it's a two-run, make it bases clearing triple. For Ferenz Wooters. He got a fastball, the outside corner. And he went with it, down the line. And that one was close, tailing and tailing, and it just bounced in fair. 3 nothing Curacao. Back to the, top of the order, it's Curly Martha now. So, boy, the error in this inning might potentially have just costed Kyer in the Netherlands three runs. While the bases were loaded, they had a runner there, picked off at second base, but a throwing error allowed the inning to continue. So the Caribbean staff is talking to the umpires. This one, yeah, Dunson just fair, looked like on the line. And the head coach, Quincy Virginia, saw him motioning as if to motion a push. So I'm not sure if there was any contact between base runners and fielders during that sequence. Martha waits on a 1-0, and the curveball's a little tall. So clearly, though, there was a discussion between the coaching staff and our umpires. Outside edge for a strike. But credit Wooters, who worked a count, made Kyer 
throw him fastballs. Martha waits on that one. He tags a breaking pitch towards the in the left. Brewers runs it down. And the Netherlands have any further damage. But their counterparts from the Caribbean score three. Brewers on the run here. The reach. And look what I found. Welcome back to Easley, South Carolina at the J.B. Owens Sports Complex where Curacao, a 3-0 lead over the Netherlands in a pivotal international matchup that features two of the better teams on this side. We have been in a brief unexpected delay as of about 5-10 minutes ago. You saw there a moment ago, Darren Weiss, our prior first umpire has got a little ice tape to the right leg the hamstring and perhaps uh, suffering uh, a small minor injury so he had to be removed from this game just before the start of the home second and we've got our new friend over at first <laughs> so hey ice up and heal up there Darren for a moment there the umpires were attempting to determine if we were going to go with three umpires for the remainder of this game. However, here comes Joe T out of the bullpen. Clutch, uh, who, by the way, is scheduled to umpire second base of our second game today. So I, I wonder if he's going to pull double duty here. Meanwhile, it's still behind the plate. You just saw Delgado, and then Bill Balog is over at third base. So after about a 10-minute, 12 minute delay here. Arshino Martina is ready to go. He struck out three in the first and misfires on the first offering to Lorenzo Willem. It's five, six, and seven now due up for the Dutch in the home second. Find themselves trailing after a costly error in that second inning. Kept the inning going and Curacao scored three. Marta, uh, Martina by the way keeps losing his ball cap so that, that may be must have to be the next item addressed at our next half inning. Willem drove in a run yesterday with double in the 11-1 win over Canada. Takes a strike to the counts two and one. So the Netherlands now finds itself in the uh, in an opposite scenario. They were up five zip after two innings. Here in the second, they're down early. So let's see if Martina can settle back into a rhythm. He was ready to go, done with his warm-up pitches before the delay. And he walks the leadoff man. The Netherlands is a very aggressive, very tactful team on the base paths. They four bags yesterday in just five innings. Now batting the left fielder, number 25. Here's yesterday's stud on the mound, Jaris Mainsma, who went four and a third innings of two-hit ball. Matter of fact, he took that perfect game into the fifth inning before allowing a couple hits. Left on right. First pitch is at the letters for a strike. So Mainsma today is out field. And with Kyer starting, the Netherlands' typical shortstop, Leifi Vondergraaf, who was in the outfield today, takes his place at short. Martina. Pauses. Making a miss. Runner on the move. Throw down is on target. Got him. Man, there's two away. Nice throw. Gershon Mogan. And Megan, that's the first down. That was just the second strike on Mainsma. That's the second time the Netherlands has put the hit and run on. They they have clearly they do this often. Mainsma couldn't catch up to the fastball, and Willem was a dead duck at second. So nobody on. One, two. Now, pitch to Mainsma previous at 
He tried to put into play. It was up in the zone. A tough one to try to attack. 2-2. Two -two. Catcher sets up away. And the count runs full. But Shario has clearly made it abundantly clear. This team likes to put pressure on their opponent. It's true to their philosophy. They're going to move. They're going to run. Hit and runs. They'll butt runners over. Play some small ball. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Martina. So Matthias Schulte for Horst, the number seven hitter, up next. The 16-year-old, two for three yesterday, also drove in a run. His first offering runs inside. The Netherlands are seeing a heavy dose of fastballs today from Martina and velocity it did not see yesterday. They faced Canada's Charlie McDougal of that 11-1 win yesterday. Throw over to first, and Mainsma gets back. McDougal. Showed such a heavy dose of breaking pitches. Curveballs, sliders, change-ups. So something that the Netherlands have to readjust to. Compelling battle against two really physical athletic teams. And arguably, maybe the two favorites on the international side. Big lead over there at first. All outside corner for a strike. There it is. The Netherlands seven out of eight now on the base paths in their two games. And the first mistake, if you will, was just a couple of moments. Willem was caught trying to steal second. In his defense, though, a hit and run was on. And the ball put into play. 1-1 one, one now is high. Tina, the ace of the, of the Curacao staff. And he's one of the younger players on the team. He just turned 15 recently. Comes home. This one pounded off to the right foul. And that, that fastball for Martina, it tops out at about 82, 80 mile per, uh, miles per hour. The two seam is his specialty pitch. Fifteen-year-old deals. Count runs full. So Martina has walked the last two hitters. He also walked a man in the first. And he collects himself behind the mound now with the count full. So Matthias sets her horse. Here comes the payoff. That's low and away from Mogan. So three straight walks, and there are two on. So if Willem wasn't caught stealing, the bases would be full for Harlem's Kennemerlin Little League. And no surprise now, we may have a meeting on the mound. Quincy Virginia is the head coach but here's one of his assistants. The assistant staff, Curacao, it includes Erwin Benita and Charlton Merit. 40 pitches now for Martha. And he's missed more frequently out of the zone. 22 of the 40 missed. 
counts always oh so important in this tournament. Depending on the number of pitches you throw in one day determines the corresponding number of rep is that are mandatory. For example, if you throw 95 or more pitches in a day, that player must rest for four days. Basically like the typical five-man rotation rest uh, at the major league level. Here's Javon Vicario. He was born in Curacao, now lives in the Netherlands on the right side. That pitch is high. So the Dutch have two on with, with now. Vicario went hitless yesterday, but he walked and scored a run. He's from Montana, Curacao. Which is not far from Willemstead. Nowhere really is. Curacao, a country that you can drive from one end to the other in about an hour. Willemstad right there in the middle. Split into a couple of different provinces. You've got Pabao and then Pariba. Here's the 1-0 from Martina. This time he finds the zone. That's there for a strike. Big spot for the Netherlands as they try to uh, respond to the three-run top of the second for Curacao. a big one that's upstairs he's walked four straight in. Curacao has had a pitcher warming up the last few minutes in their bullpen down lane consequential moment and it does appear like Curacao is going to make a pitching change very quickly in this game Martina struck out three in the first inning and yet he's going to be lifted here in the second after walked four. And if not for Gershon Mogan throwing a run in second, the Netherlands might be on the board. Nevertheless, the there is one out, and the bases are loaded. And Quincy Virginia is going to his bullpen. Kevin Rosina on the mound return base is loaded in the home second with one out Netherlands threatening and so the Caribbean manager Quincy Vert he does not mess around goes to the bullpen replaces Arshino Martina with Kevin Rosina that's the 16 year old from Willow and his first offering to Cairo Hazel misses wines and offers up the 1-0. That's away. Now the Netherlands has worked four walks in the inning. Outside edge for a strike. The only reason why no run had scored in the frame is because Lorenzo Willem was caught trying to steal earlier in the inning at second base. So now it's Rosina's turn after Martina threw 45 pitches. That's a critical caveat. I'll explain later catcher sets up away the 2-2 misses Rosina has been one of the most effective arms in this rotation and for this little league program for years payoff Hazel drills it down the line that's fair one run is coming home Schulteter gets the wave he scores Hazel winds up at second and the Netherlands punches back three to two Hazel, the number nine man in the Netherlands order, does what Wooters did in the top half. He takes the fastball away and goes with and knocks in a couple of runs. Right over there's head at first, and it's a one-run game again.
Back to the top of the order. Rosina faces Colin Brewers with two on. Good tailing change up there. Counts nothing and one. So all those walks certainly have come back to hurt Curacao. Martina actually did not allow a hit. Cairo Hazel's double first of the afternoon, or make it the morning party for the Netherlands. 1-1 one, one is tapped to the right side. Holds the runners. And now you got a man caught between first and throwback is safe. Here comes the runner from third. Vicario's out. A major batter by the Netherlands. It helps Curacao get out of this second. The pull to first. Riviere retires Brewers. And then you had the runner Vicario make it his in. Caught between second and third. On that throw to the bag, Vicario says, I'll try it. Not this time. Over. The Netherlands answers with two runs of its own in the home second. So it's a one game heading to the third. If you want your child to experience the teamwork and fun of Little League Baseball or Softball, then visit littleleague.org and enter your address to find a Little League community near you. Top of the third, Curacao at the plate. The heavy favorites, especially on the international side, with a one-run lead. They scored their three in for the second. Netherlands responded, as you saw, with two in the home half. In an inning that could have been more, or could have netted more for the Netherlands. Here's your uh, pro far behind in the count, nothing to two. Here's how the bottom of the second came to a close. Runners at second and third to the right side. The runner at third throws. And then Cairo Hazel at second base broke for third. So they tried to get him at second base on the throw. Vicario made it into trying to sprint home and score. And an on-target throw got him there. So that's how it came to a close. 2-1 offering coming to, coming to Georgia Pro. And Tristan Kyer gets him hacking at the breaking one away. The number three hitter, Deshandro Trump, is coming up next. Big hitter on the right side, takes the breaking ball third. Kyer has struck out a pair. He's also walked a man. Out a couple of hits in that second inning. Trump, one of the strikeout victims, 1-0. Oh. Kyer has been dubbed the secret win on the mound for the Netherlands, especially of late. Uh, normally the starting shortstop for this Dutch team. Paints the outside corner for a strike. Now you can see why he's their starting shortstop. He's got a rocket arm. He's got a fastball that can easily reach the low eight, which is certainly above average for this level. 2-1. Breaking ball. Trump goes with it over the second baseman's head. That's a base hit. That's a fine piece of hitting by the 16-year-old from Willemstad. He waited on the breaking pitch. It the other way. So now you got Payson Riviere, the cleanup batter, coming up. Riviere drilled one through the left side for a base hit. It's time up in the second. Kyer now from the stretch once again. And Kyer's turned into that secret weapon, as I mentioned. It's been a return to the mound for him, in a sense. Trump, that one off of his leg. He started pitching a bit more as the season played out. It's that foul ball. That's that's always a painful moment. Boy, usually you see the foul ball break down maybe into 
the foot, ankle, or at, at, at knee. That one hit the, the five. Counts now nothing. And two. Kyer was just very effective in that regional championship for the Netherlands. And so he is returned to the mound with vigor. One away in the third. Trump has to protect with two strikes. The righty fires. Trump goes with it. Lined out to right. Splits the gap. And this extra base is for sure. Trump on his way to third. Riviere's got thoughts on a triple. The run scores. The throw to third is wide. And an RBI triple for Pace and Riviere. It's four to two. These Caribbean hitters have done a nice job of going with fastballs away to the opposite field. Not to do too much, and right there, a nice, simple, easy swing. Gets you a triple and another run. Clay Winkler is scheduled to hit next, but here comes Sherman Rio. That pitch count number again, 45-46 is a threshold. We start to wonder about decisions being made. Yeah, Gario is going to make a change. He is taking the baseball from Kyer. And he is going to his bullpen in a pivotal game. That will determine who advances to the international bracket semifinal. Smith out of the bullpen. And he pitches next. However, this is a pivotal game. The winner advances to the international bracket semifinal on Tuesday. You don't have to play into that game on the elimination side if you advance. Winklaw, very imposing figure on the right side of the plate. He popped out to the third baseman his last time up. Swings is strike one. Schmidt coming with a different velocity. Something that the Curacao players will have to adjust to. There's one. Pace and Rip is over at third. He just tripled in DeShandro Trump. So Curacao after scoring three in the second, adds another here. Swing, that one's hit high, deep out center. Brewers got it lined up, should be deep enough to get Riviere home. Here's the throw, once it to the plate, is late. And so two runs are home for Curacao in the third. 
So Winkler does his job. And it's five to now batting the designated hitter, Centurion. This is a relentless Curacao lineup. High powered offense. They've got a great rotation. And it felt like in a lot of ways that they were perhaps the favorites. Especially on the international bracket side heading into this tournament. Martinez drills that one, but caught Lorenzo Willem. The reflexes. Steals a sure base hit away from Shendry and Martinez, and the inning is over. A rope and a beautiful catch. Curacao gets two, though. And he throws back to three runs. Two more runs for Curacao in the top half of the third. Winner one goes to the international bracket semifinal on Tuesday. Remember that the Little League Community Recognition Program helps to, uh, helps to honor those dedicated individuals who not only volunteer their at local Little League programs, but also contribute in other ways to improve their community. So to learn more or to nominate a community hero, visit littleleague.org slash community heroes. Meet of the Netherlands order due up against Kevin Rostina. It's two, three, and four. Selwyn Herkmans lofts this one out to left field. And Ferenz Wooters makes the play. One gone in the third. Levy Vondergroff uh, was the slotted three hitter to begin the day. And continue to hit. Juan Gielen, healing pardon, will follow. First full inning of work for Kevin Rosina, who replaced Christian Martina an inning ago. He's got that sidearm delivery, and he is changed the angle, not by much, but by a few degrees on some of his releases. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Vondergraaf walked in the first inning, stole a base, but then was stranded there. Bounces that one slowly. Winds up foul. So Rosina came out of the pen with the bases loaded, a cold jam, and he allowed a double to Cairo Hazel. That brought in two runs, but then an abnormal double play on a ground ball to first base helped him get out of the jam with no further damage. Both of those runs were charged to Martin. Rosina's got a fastball that can hit 80. And a breaking pitch that can drop in for a cold third strike. Two away. So Geeling hits next with nobody on. It's a little word of advice and wisdom from his teammate. And you've already seen Rosina likes to work in that slider. And the curveball as well. And up behind the plate from Mogan to get the strike call. His coaches say he's kind of like Greg X, where he's not going to walk a lot of hitters. He's going to find the zone and make his up speed him. After the double to Hazel, he's now three in a row. 1-1 one, one to Geeling is fouled away. Pivotal A2 matchup between the two Dutch countries, the Netherlands and the constituent country in the Caribbean of the Netherlands. Breaking pitch, got the outside corner. It's a called third strike. One, two, three inning for Rosina. It's our first of the morning. Curacao by three, going back to work in the fourth next. Curacao. Oh, the favorites from the Caribbean with a three-run lead. We start the fourth in a moment. There is Australian team from North Ride Little League. It's right outside of... They await. And will play their first game later to... Australia, like the Caribbean, lucked out with the bye to day two of the tournament. Four teams, two from each side, U.S. and international. 
of them get chosen for uh, to receive that bye into day two of the tournament. And so Australia will play the Latin American winners yesterday, Matamoros Little League from Mexico. Roden Smith back on the he faces seven, eight, nine here in the fourth. This is Nathan Castillo who finds himself no two hole. He walked and scored on the Wooters triple in the second. The four games today features teams that received the buy and then the winners from yesterday. So again, it's the Netherlands and Curacao, Australia and Mexico later. 1 2 is hit Harp. Over to short. Kyer, yeah, he's got a great glove. Nice backhand. And there's one away. Meanwhile, the other games today are on the U.S. side. Hard hit ball. That's a tough hop, Eric. But Kyer was right on it. Today's starter has still got plenty left in the tank. He only threw 45. Is. So he goes from the mound to short. Gershon Mogan on the right side next. The catcher for Curacao is the eight hitter. He squares, bluffs the bunt, and the pitch got the knees anyway. So on the other side of the bracket, you've got Hawaii, the West Region champs that beat Texas yesterday, faced New Jersey at 12 noon. Mogan drills this one. This one's got some flight out to deep left towards the back. Mainsma makes the play. Two out. Mogan barreled this one up. And just missed what could have been the first homer of the tournament. Make it potentially the second homer of the tournament. Perrin Wooters drops that one into the center. That's a base hit. So he's now two for two. The nine hitter for Libyan champs has got the loudest hit of the day. The base bring triple in the second. And a single here in the fourth with two out. Roden Smith had retired four straight hitters. The only four hitters had faced until that single. And now Curly Martha hits in the top half of the. Now batting the shortstop, Curly Martha. So again, it's Hawaii and New Jersey right after this one. A scheduled first pitch time at 12 noon. That'll do who reaches the U.S. semifinal. Nice breaking pitch. Cut at for strike one. And the winner of that one faces the all, uh, the, the winner of the South Carolina battle. The Southeast region champs, Irmo, South Carolina, faces the host Easley team. That's later today at 8 Eastern. All four games of the utmost importance. Runner goes, 1-1 one, one is high. Vicario's throws a little wide. And Wooters... Slides into second safely. It's a stolen base. And he himself in scoring position. That could be critical here in the fourth. Curacao trying to add another run. Two out. It's a pretty darn good jump. Nobody holding the runner on at second. That one is drilled, but down the line. Foul. Martha got a hanging breaking pitch, turned on it, and just missed a big blast. Smith coming with a 2-2. Speed, he goes down to get it again, but yanks it foul. He's actually 0 for 2 today. He's put the ball into play and hit it hard twice. But he's bounced out and flown out to center. 
And he's looking for his first hit that could maybe drive in a run. He is tracking it, pitches nicely. 2-2. Two -two. Swings, and he's out ahead of the breaking ball again. So a little antsy in the box. There it is. Count goes full, runner on the go. The tag was on time, but the ball had bounced away from Willem. And so two stolen bases now. If Willem's got the ball, Wooters is out on the tag. Big payoff with two out. Netherlands trying to strand a runner. That one's in the dirt. Ball four. And so Spitnick, Sejerdrick Profar, the number two hitter, coming up. I mentioned how much of this Curacao rock, many of the players on this roster were also on 2019 Williamsport team that reached the Little League World Series championship. Runner on the go, Vicario throws down, runner at third stays put. And Martha safe. Goes Martha. Vicario contested here with the runners on the move. But I, I, I mentioned that 2019 run because really was the MVP in a sense of that Little League World Series Williamsport. 2-0 to Profar is drilled foul. And so the Caribbean, perhaps they are on the pitches here in the fourth. Profar, the second baseman, 0 for 2 today, waits. 2-1, Hanger is upstairs. That's outside, ball four. Smith has walked back-to-back -back hitters, and the count goes full. Or the bases are, pardon me, with the number three hitter, Deshandro Trump, coming up. And before we see the matchup here between Smith and Trump, here comes the manager, Gario. Here comes Trump. Now batting the third baseman, number eight, DeShandro Trump. They're two outs. Trump's, uh, Trump lets that one fade low and in for ball one. Trump singled his time up, but that was against Tristan Kyer. A one outside. Yeah. 
two up. Outside corner strike. Kirchhoff scored three in the second, two in the third. Outside edge again, and Trump disagrees. Todd Sachs, he's, uh, I'll put it this way, he's had a very consistent strike zone for both spots. 2-2. Breaking pitch. That one is tattooed, but foul down the line. And Trump yanked the curve in on the hands. Each pitcher probably getting a couple of balls on either side of the plate. That's been his zone today. Saxies, that is, behind the plate. Bases loaded. Count two away here in the fourth. 3-2. Swing and a pop-up. That's it of the seats. Trump has displayed some mighty swings in this at-bat. About to see the eighth pitch in a big moment. Will Curacao really break it open here? Ready with a three-run lead. Payoff. Popped up foul again. All right, the Curacao hitters, they have been all over the fastballs from the and the one pitch that has given them a little bit of trouble, relatively speaking, has just been beat. And Smith probably going to it here again. Swing. This one drilled on a line. In the center, it's a base hit. One comes home. Here's another two-run base hit for DeAndre Trump. And it's 7-2. to two. That time, Trump handled the breaking pitch. A whole bunch of them in that at-bat. Waited on it and drilled it right back where it came from. Brewers had no play. Uh, at, no play on that one, regardless of where he was shaped. And the Netherlands will make a pitching change here. Gar to the mound for the second time this half inning. And now it's decision time. As you go to a new pitcher, he could go higher. He's going to go to the bullpen. Two more runs for Curacao in the fourth inning. And they do it with two outs. The first two are retired, but then Wooters singled. Martha and Profar walked, and Trump allowed two run single. So it's a pitching change, and we'll tell you about the new arm. When we return to Easley. There's Feta Ostvi, the third pitcher used by the Netherlands in this pivotal international bracket game. Curacao is two runs here in the fourth, so their lead grows back to five. It's seven to two in the fourth. The latest big one. A uh, single off of Deshandro Trump's bat. He took the rodent spit curveball and laced it right back up the middle for a two-run base hit. So Smith now been relieved. And Ostveen, the 15-year-old from Harlem, who is another reliable pitcher, is out there. It's the third arm that the Caribbean champs will see today. Doesn't get easy here. This is the cleanup man, Pace and Riviere. He's now back in the box with a pair of runners on. He was in this position ago, and he drilled an RBI triple. Riviere, they call him El Viego, which roughly translates to the old man. He is the elder statesman of the bunch. It's two for two today. 1-0 misses side from Ostveen. Curacao scored three in the third, and then the Dutch responded with two in the home half of that inning. But now Curacao has scored two in each of the last two games.
They are certainly the heavy favorites, especially on the international side in this season's Senior League World Series. They've come rolling in after going a perfect 7-0 in their regional earlier this month. 3-0 is outside, and so Riviere works. The Bases are loaded again. Pro far to third. Trump moves up to second. And Winklar, who drove in a run his last time up, is about to step into the box. So Sherman Gario, he went to Tristan Kyer. He was uh, his starter today, but he pulled him rather quickly, only through 45 pitches after allowing a few runs in the first couple innings. And so now the Netherlands are on their third pitcher. Now, Kyer can be brought back into this game to pitch. But only once. 1-0. So a starter who is sub out, or a starter who is removed from the mound, that is, in any given game, they can be, you know, called upon to pitch once again. But if you take them out a second time, they are not allowed to pitch a time. Two up. That one gets the outside edge for a strike. Two runs are in, and they want more. Ace is loaded. Just a little above the letters. The walks have really hurt the Netherlands in this inning. Three of them far. Here's the pitch. Outside corner for a strike. And the two Roden Smith walks earlier in this inning came with two outs. That's what allowed the door to remain open for Trump to drive in a couple with that single. People are waiting. Payoff. Swings and foul tips it into the mitt. It's over. But Curacao only grows its lead with two more runs. It's up five halfway through. Two more runs. Curacao, his lead grows to five, heading to the bottom of the uh, fourth inning. So if you want to see the girls with game, tune into the, uh, tune into the excitement of uh, with tag Summer of Softball and visit LittleLeagueSoftball.org for great content, information, and other uh, info about starting softball league and more. So here we go at the bottom of the fourth inning. Lorenzo Willem, the leadoff man. Rip 2 on the ground over to third. Tromp handles it nicely. One away. <laughs> Netherlands back at the plate, but down five runs. Yesterday they scored 11 against Canada. But against the favorites on the international side today, they mustered just two runs. Both of them came in the second when they were really threatening. A blunder on the base pass led to a Play that finished that inning prematurely for the Kennemerlin Little League. Rosina has retired five in a row now on the mound for Curacao. One to Jaris Mainsma. That one is looped through the right side. It's a base hit. So Mainsma with the offering. A fastball away and laces it to right. His hands through the zone there. Just a sweet swing for yesterday's winning pitcher, Jaris Mainsma. Here's Matthias Schulte Terhorst. He's in right field today for the Netherlands. Check swing, and he did go. Schulte Terhorst walked forward. 
on Cairo Hazel's two-run double in the second. Rosina with that sidearm delivery is now ahead, nothing and two. Rosina has allowed just two hits. He's retired the others he's seen. 0-2. Oh, Outside corner, a call, third strike. Check on the run on the first base line is a wild throw from Mogan. And so Mainsma does advance into scoring position. The error. But Schulteterhorst looked at a call, third strike, and is two away. Rosina has been exactly what Dow is needed in this game. There's the high throw. The starter today, No Martina, walked five hitters in an inning and a third. And Rosina has come in here and thrown strikes. Javon Vicario waits. That one tails away. Rosina, Caribbean champs, they won seven games in their regional by an average margin of victory of 10. They torched opponents that they saw in Willemstad. It was, they were the host country and city for their regional tournament. That's up hot. The count's 3-0 and on Vicario. Defeated their counterparts from Willemstad, Pariba Little League, 7 of 5 in the championship game to reach the series. And that proved to be really the only nail biter during their run. They actually won four games by 12 or more runs. They tramp games. 3 1. That's away, and now there's two on. Kai Rosell, the number nine hitter, back at the plate with runners on again. The last time he was up in the situation, he drove in two with a double down the right field line in the second. And if you're the Dutch, you have to convert here. By the way, part of me, it's not his cutter after that pitching age earlier in the game. Kyer moves to nine hole. This is now waits on the 0-1 from Rosina. Change the delivery there just just a fraction. It's with the big leg kick, the turn towards second, and he drops the curve in for a strike. Kyer must protect. Got a chance to maybe not get a run here. Rosina coming home. Off speed, yanked. Foul down the third base line. Kyer timed it up nicely. Just foul by a foot and a half. Rosina trying to put an end to the thoughts. That one's in the dirt. Three hits yesterday for Kyer, plus the, all those RBIs. The at bat alive. Undoubtedly one of the more talented hitters in the order. So walked, he stole a base, he scored. Two runs in an 11 to 1 win for the Netherlands for Canada. Rosina got an outside target. Fastball or slider, I should say, tails away. Seventh pit bat coming to Kyer. Two two coming. Lined down the right field line, but foul. So that's about four foul, maybe five in the at bat for Kyer. And 
The 15-year-old from Harlem, one of the leaders, undoubtedly. Encouraging, guiding voices on this year. Is that a balk? It is. Now the runners advance. And now this moment just got a tenser for Racina. Kyer could maybe drive in two with a base. Two, two. He swings, hits it hard. In the left it is a base hit. Mains mistakes. Vicario gets the stop sign at third. And now it's a 7-3 game. Tristan Kyer on the ninth pitch of the bat after all those balls knocks in a run. And I'm not sure Mainsma gets Dave from second base on that one. So the balk appears to be incredibly important for the Netherlands in that sequence. Back to the top, Colin Brewers taps that one behind the plate foul. Racina from the stretch. What got him into trouble on that balk, it looked like he was possibly going to the line with runners at second and third. Or, uh, excuse me, at, at first. And so it might have been just a, a mental lapse. And, of course, it, he tried to step off. And the process balked, and so the runners advanced. Favorable count for Brewers, who's 0 for 2 today. He swing, punches that one through the right side. Another run scores. Kyer on his way to third. Run the corners again after back-to-back -back run scoring singles for the Netherlands. Doing it with two outs. Just station to station baseball this time. Kyer and Brewers, very reliable And so for Brewers, is the time against Rosina. He makes the adjustment after Rosina got him in the second inning, and he punches that one through the right side. So two runs come home for the Netherlands when they needed them most. It looked like here in the middle innings of this game as if Curacao, were they just going to start to run away with this? <laughs> the orange wave. They're getting it going as best they can. After a quick meeting, Rosina stays in the game. And he is, again, up until the last couple of at-bats. Showing a very steady arsenal of quality. Colin Herkman's big, tall lefty. The number two hitter steps in with runners on. He swings and misses for strike one. Herkman struck out looking against Martina back in the first, and then he flew to left in the third. Outside corner for a strike. Oh, one tried to get Herkman to, to perhaps chase that one. It was just too far off the outside edge. With Kyer and third Brewers at first, there's a one two swing and a miss. That one's in the dirt, though. The, so the catcher has to collect the run scores. Brewers now is caught in a rundown. That's a cost mistake. To end the inning, but the Netherlands does get three runs. The drop third strike allowed that sequence to play out. So Kyer scores. And the Netherlands are back within two. Mogan couldn't quite find. And, and the mistake there on the base paths you see by Brewers allows the champs to get out of this. It's a two-run game again. Things have tightened up.
The Netherlands respond to three runs in the home fourth, and things have heightened up a bit in a international bracket game at the Senior League Baseball World Series. Welcome to East South Carolina. Here we are in the fifth. It begins with the Curacao base runner. Shandry and Martinez going to stretch it to two. The throw to second. Gets away, and Martinez is on his way to third. So his hustle leads the Aaron throw. And Curacao on one hit for the fifth inning as a man many feet away from scoring. So this is an all sold double for Martinez. Though Mainsma, if he takes that one back in with a little more urgency, likely gets him at second, especially with a target throw. Over at second there, Space just had to bait as if he still had the ball. Martinez realized very quickly that it had skittered away. So now the Caribbean threatening again. They are to stay real in this office. Runners have been on all day. The pitcher on the mound is Feta Ostfi, out for his first full inning of work. He came on in relief in the fourth, faced two hitters, walked one, and struck out. He's the third pitcher for the Dutch today. 1 0 to Nathan is clobbered out to center. Brewers has to retreat. Underneath it, makes the catch. Martinez tags and scores. It's eight to five, Curacao. So Cat still gets his job done. And Curacao just keeps on rolling at the plate. Now eight runs, eight hits, plenty of walks as well. Twelve hitters have reached base safely today. Not including Gershon Mogan, though, is at the plate. He has flown twice. Hits with nobody on and one out. Outside corner stroke. So... You wonder now, if the Netherlands got to start thinking tactics in a sense because Curacao's offense is mighty powerful. 1-1. The Dutch tighten things up by scoring three in the fourth, so they are in striking range in a sense. They were down five just an inning ago. 2-1. Mogan takes it high. So if you're Sherman Gario, do you start thinking ahead if it was a way for Osteen to get out of the rest of this inning with no more damage? You could bring back a pitcher like Tristan Kyer, who certainly showed a bit more command and velocity, but he did get hit around a little bit in the early innings. That's a walk, so Mogan is aboard. It's the 14th base runner to reach for the Caribbean. Ferenz Wooters is up next. He's two for two, a dangerous bat. And the bottom of the order for Curacao. And here comes Sherman Gario in his second season as coach this Little League program. He's going to grab the baseball. He says he's got about eight pitchers that he's very comfortable using. And he's going to go to another one here. So it'll be the fourth pitcher on the mound for the Netherlands. And it's Thomas Smith, Roden's brother. He is on the mound when we return. One man on and one out for Curacao in the fifth. Thomas Smith is the fourth used by the Netherlands today. He comes out of the bullpen with one out and a runner on in the fifth. Dangerous number nine hitter. Ferenz Wooters about to step in to face the right-hander. Wooters is 
Do today with a bases clearing triple. It's a big bat in the ninth. And he's ready to face the righty. So a little different look. The left-hander Feta Ostbein. Now out. He is a little low. Mogan first base is very quick. So he's certainly a base stealing threat. Three run game between Curacao and the Netherlands. At the letters for strike. Winner of this one advances to the international bracket semifinal on Tuesday. And from there, you're away from going to the international final. 1-1. One, one. Runner on the go. That one is a bouncing ball foul. One two is popped up down the foul. Smith checks on her at first. Mogan gets back. Curacao by th the favorites on the international side. One, two. Swing and a bouncer. Through the left side, it's a base hit with the runner on the move. The shortstop there was shading towards the base. And that roller gets by him. Into third, and Wooters is down three for three. So there goes runner, and Kyer likely, uh, likely backhands that one. He's playing his normal position, so Curacao, again, this relentless, keep putting pressure on their opponents. Wooters, by the way, getting some help from the medical personnel in Easley, reaching down his right knee. And that is not a good sign, and not a sight right now for Curacao. Wooters, yeah, he's handing the helmet over to Erwin Benita. <laughs> the only thought is, does he jam something walking or uh, 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 running around Rounding first base. No batting, the catcher. So now we have a pinch over at first. First pitch to Curly Martha rolled foul. Juarez is the pinch runner for Wooters. And there he is in the background getting worked on in the medical tent. Oh, and that's hit on the screws out the center. Down for a base hit. Curacao at another run. Mart's got an RBI. And it gets by Brewers. Suarez easily scores. Marth on the way home. Another throw. Hits the Little League style inside the marker there. Everybody scores. A two error sequence for Netherlands. Just bounces right underneath the mitt.
So Martha, of course, gets credit for an RBI regardless because Mogan scored easily. Wooters scores on the error in center. And then, the, obviously, the throwing error allowed Martha to score. Nobody on for Profar. So now Curacao is taking the largest lead of the day. And this one is... This sequence is going to really sting the, uh, the Netherlands. 1-0 on the ground to third. Willems got it. Gobbles it up first for the second out. Here's Deshandro Trump. Nobody on two out. Trump fouls that back. So here's why things really sting if you're the Netherlands. They have now four errors in the field. And if made two costly base running mistakes that have run them out of two separate innings. Here's the 0-1. That one is high. Now, you have to, of course, keep crediting for this a relentless offensive attack. They put the ball into play. But the Netherlands, boy, this is a much closer game if not for some of the states. Regardless, though, Curacao in command now. This is another high-scoring game for Curacao. Mentioned some of the scores from their regional. They were eye popping. So you want to pop his wave, Dad had missed. So in their regional, they beat Bonaire 8 in zip, the Dominican Republic 15 3, and Aruba 16 1. There's Wooters still getting worked on under the medical 2 2. That one is drilled down the line foul. They also beat Puerto Rico 15-0. They beat their really competitive rivals 12-6, 2-2. That one is hammered left side. It's a foul. One thing in common in all those scores, they scored double runs six times out of their seven games in the regional. That one just wide of the chalk. Trump trying to protect with two strikes. He's two, two, to, uh, two for three today with a pair of RBIs. Schmidt settles, 2-2. Two, two. Swing and a pop-up. Vicario might have a play up against the netting. Makes the catch, inning over. But Curacao scored four in the inning, including Curly Martha's what we would call inside the home run. So history is going to be made this August as professional softball comes to Greenville, North Carolina. First time ever, Athletes Unlimited Pro Games at the Little League Softball World Series. That's on August 9th. And so to learn more, go to littleleague.org slash athletes unlimited. The Caribbean regional champs, the favorites on the international side of the bracket with an 11-5 lead now after three more, make it four started, four more runs score in the top half of the fifth inning. Unearned run as the Netherlands commit two errors in the half inning game. Izzy and Bogan, the 15-year-old Olmstad now on the mound to throw the bottom of the fifth inning. Faces the heart of the Dutch old safety Vondergroff. Gets things started on the right side. Takes that one away. It's Vondergroff, Geeling, and Willem. Three, four, and two up. Fastball there from the right-hander is in for a strike. Oh, 
Izzy and Mogan replaces Kevin Rosina. And so it's the cousins working together. Gershon Mogan, his cousin, balls and strikes behind the plate. He's missed a few times here to Vondergroff, who's 0 for 1. He struck out in the third facing Rosina. Also walked against the starter, Arshino Martina, in the first. 3 1. That's there for a strike. So pitch count is a very important role in some of the pitching decisions in a game like this. The winner, a day off, and goes to the international semi on Tuesday. 3 2 is rolled down field line foul. So Arshino Marta, uh, Martina this through 45. Kevin Rosina was just removed. So depending on the number of pitch you throw, if you don't throw more than 45, all you need is one day's rest to be available to pitch again two days later. On the way. Outside edge, it's a called third strike. Dean Mogan gets Vondergroff looking one way. That's now seven strikeout Curacao pitchers. Yeah, just perfect. And Vondergraff, I know he was trying to maybe influence Todd Sassy, but no chance there. Geeling has punched out twice. Swinging, the other looking. And a called third strike of the outside edge against Rosina in the third. Hook drops in for a cold second strike. The coaching staff says that is the best pitch for Mogan. That big hook. Fastball runs high. He can it up undoubtedly to the low 80s. And again, that's it's above average fastball speed for this level. He is 84, even 85 on a couple of occasions this year. Mogan certainly a power pitcher with the power curve. Coming home with a payoff. Fastball just below the knees. I thought he got the outside edge, but must have been low, so Geeling works the walk. So the Netherlands has had a runner on base in every frame except for the third. They scored two in the second and three in the fourth. But in both innings, no batting, the third base a, a pretty third significant base stake ran them out of each frame. That wound up being the third out with the second and the fourth innings. Lorenzo Willem a little late on the fat. That one's foul. Willem walked in the second, grounded out in the fourth. The Dutch on Dutch battle. Here is, of course, a constituent country of the Netherlands. And 1-1 one, one missed just a little high. Curacao is a beautiful island of about 150,000 people. You can drive the length of the country in about an hour. Located in the southern Caribbean Sea. It's basically right off the Venezuela. Just getting to Venezuela by boat does not take long at all. And it is a baseball crazed country and community in Willemstad. 3 1 is inside. So Mogan has walked back to back hitters. He is known for his control and command. And yet, these Netherlands hitters, they have shown that they're very patient. And very selective at the plate. They've got collectively her eye. They have drawn eight walk 
weeks as a team today, and we're not yet done with five innings. Charlton Marie, not quite pleased with consecutive walks, out there to mind his squad. Not to mess around here in the fifth inning. Because we've seen when the has gotten several runners on, they have scored. They did so in the second and the fourth. And now, still only one out. So the Netherlands, seven walks yesterday in their five-inning run rule shortened and run win. And again, eight more walks today. So that's 15 over not quite 10 innings. Jaris Mainsba, first pitch. Sends it high in the air, out to center. Winkler underneath it, two away. So Mainsba, he got a pitch he could hit. But it's got two. Is this the year that the Bow Little League wins it all again here at the League Baseball World Series level? Schulte to horse takes one. This Little League program won it all at fifth in 2002. They were runners-up in 08. 1-0 is high. Willemstad, Curacao won the Senior League World Series back in 2018. However, the Pariba Little League, the counterpart of Pabao, the two most prompt forces in the country. Pariba was runner-up twice as well in the last eight. So Curacao has been in this title game five times at the Senior League Baseball level over the last two decades. That's, that's significant. 2-1. Breaking pitch in the dirt. Runners may go, and they start to advance. Gilling down third, and Willem up to second. Now if you're Schulte to Hurst, you could knock in a pair with a base hit. And boy, would they be needed runs for the Netherlands that have been taken two steps forward, but three back. Bogan ready. Cut home. That one's tapped. Back to the mound. Mogan pounces on it. Picks it up with the glove. I to first. And that one is wide. One run comes in. Here comes the second. So the Curacao error keeps the door for the Netherlands. And they make them pick with a pair. I'm not sure Rivier had really any chance to catch this one was it off yeah it was why no he had it in the glove and it's just like a slingshot and flying out so the e the e3 uh, Two Netherlands runs to score. Wow. We have seen a surplus of errors in this game. The second commit by Curacao. The Netherlands has commit four. Air. He's got the base, he's got the ball, and there it goes. Curacao coaches have asked something of Todd Saxe, the home plate umpire, and they want him to address something. He's over at the monitor. We do have a replay review system.
think Curacao is asking to see if was there any sort of interference on the play first base, but it did appear as if the base from Schulte to Horst was, of course, in foul ground. Now here, here's where Schulte to Horst could be ruled out if he starts running line and is, yeah, okay, so he is on. You could see, though, that he does appear as if he is in the baseline. However, whether or not a base runner was not running in the proper baseline, all right, that's not a reviewable. So that's what's going to allow this inning to continue. And was that a balk? Or Sherman Gario certainly thought there was uh, one. Or I should say Sigmar Eustacio. So Joey Tigner, the first base umpire, calls everybody in for a quick conference. So we play on. The Netherlands uh, dugout wants an action, perhaps. Well, we're going back to replay review. Watch that left foot. And that one to me does appear as if, look, he disengages right foot. I believe that's what Todd Sachs is explaining to Gario, the manager of this Netherlands team in the dugout. So now we will play on. Let's update you. Two run are home for the Netherlands in this fifth inning. And both of them scored on an error. And all happening with two outs. So you still have Schultz or Horst at first, and this is Jake Cario. Waited a long time there for the first pitch of the at-bat. Foul. It has not been the cleanest game. We've seen six commit total. However... It's it's been a rollicking one for sure. Curacao has led the whole way, by many as five runs. But now back to our part of me. They led by six runs at the start of this half. But now it's back to a four-run game. One on and two away. One-one from Mogan and Robert. Lifted high out to center, but playable for Winklar. Now the inning's over. So the Netherlands scores twice. Curacao still has him arm's length away. Through with five. And easily. Curacao has scored runs in each of the last four innings. It holds 11-7 lead as we head to the sixth inning. East region champs on the U.S. side, the New Jersey squad from Chip Hill awaits the finish of this one. East meets West 
in our next game of the day. It's the East and West Region champs, so New Jersey face Hawaii. Our next game was is scheduled for a 12 p.m. Eastern first pick. However, with this game starting the sixth inning now of a seven inning regulation game, that first pitch time likely to be pushed. When this one is over, we will start that one 30 minutes after the conclusion of this game. This relentless Curacao offense, which has scored 11 runs in five innings, goes to work against Thomas Smith. This is Payson Riviere. He is a very menacing cleanup hitter. He's two for two with a walk. He's also tripled and scored a run. One one offering. That one is yanked through the right side. It's a base hit. So pace in Riviere, the 16-year-old from Willemstad, he is three for three. An RBI plus he scored two runs. This uh, Curacao order, it is just chock full of really savvy hitters. It's a physical, athletic, very imposing-looking team. That comes from a league program that is world renowned at this point. In a lot of ways, here's Clay Winkler. Swings and hammers that in the air. Foul. And it's caught. Great play on the run. Smith from second base. Tracking it all the way. He says, not so fast. This is a long run. Look where he starts. He came in uh, after pitching, replaced Hazel at second base, and makes the nearly over-the-shoulder catch there, basket style. Or pardon me, that's Vondergrop over at second base. Nicely done. Martinez, though, rips one in the left for another base hit. He's now for four today. There goes the runner to third, the throw. Time and on target. Riviere tagged out by Willem. This time makes up for a mistake an inning ago. And the center fielder throws out Riviere trying to stretch from second to third. He notices it, picks it up cleanly, and the throw is there. Two away. Now Martinez winds up at second base. So here's Nathan Castillo with two gone. That pitch is high and outside, ball one. Brewers made the costly error in the fifth inning. He's, he's a excellent center. It was just a brief mental mistake that allowed a couple runs to score in the prior inning. That time he makes up for it in a big way. Eight to five on the putout. After the great Vondergroff play a few moments earlier. So two gone for Smith. With the Netherlands running out of time to mount a comeback. There's a 1-1. Outside corner for a stroke. Such a unique matchup. With Curacao being a Dutch constituent country in the Caribbean. Meeting their counterparts from the motherland. This day two matchup. It's a big one. Runner on the move. Down to third. Martinez. Rather nonchalant catch there on the on the way to third. But steal the base. And now any sort of pass ball could allow Curacao to grow its lead. 2-2 uh, two -two pitch on the way. That's low. Castillo, a wise eye. Let's Castillo, the right fielder. Has walked and scored a run. He's all driven one in on a sacrifice fly. Uh, payoff. Tapped foul. Castillo stays alive. The win of this game advances 
to what amounts to be the international bracket semifinal game. That would be Tuesday night at 7.30 Eastern. And then if you win that in the international final. Let's do a payoff again. That one is drilled out to left. Mainsma's got it lined up. Over. So the Netherlands keeps Curacao board for the first time since the first inning. And they go back to work with just six outs with here next. Netherlands hits at the bottom of the sixth inning, down four, and with just six outs to work with. The ex of the Little League World Series can be downloaded now in the new Little League World Series apps. Fans can view schedules, they can watch highlights, check out when their team plays next on the Little League World Series app. Download it today. The Caribbean champs, Curacao in front. In that sleek, bright teal blue. I like the multicolored uh, teal and black umbrella as well. Now, it's sunny <laughs> in the forecast, at least in the immediate future, but it is warm. The intense sun in easily South Carolina this week. Temperatures are going to be in the 90s in the afternoon all week before we eventually champion next Saturday, August 5th. Netherlands, the big spot. As 9-1-2 and two do up against Izzy and Mo. The leadoff man is Tristan Kyer, who started today mound, since moved to short, and he occupies the number nine slot. Good, a uh, very capable and dependable one. Now in that nine hole. He singled in a run his last time up in a and fourth inning for the Dutch. That fourth inning felt like Curacao was starting to pull away. 3-1. Boy, that looked good. And instead, it's ball four. So the Netherlands gets a leadoff runner on. It has not done that often. This is just the second time today. The Dutch have got a leadoff man on. And boy, they could use it. Brewers. He also drove in a run in that fourth inning. That was a pivotal, a pivotal. <laughs> let me try it again. Pivotal bottom of the fourth inning. Runner on the move, swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Mogan's throw, just a split second late. It bounced, and it had to reach his glove up to collect it. That allowed Meyer to slide in under the tag. There it is. He had to scoop it. Boy, just a split second ahead of the tag. Kyer gets in. Second stolen for the Netherlands today. And the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean coach.
with nobody out and the top of the order up here in the sixth. Call is confirmed. So Brewers back at the plate with the count nothing and one. And the top of the Netherlands order is up. Recenters now. His 0 1 curveball drops in for a strike. Nice pitch. Seven inning regular game. Winner to the international bracket semifinal. 0 2 is low. That game would be Tuesday evening. So the. It's a nice day of rest tomorrow. One, two. Count evens, two balls and two strikes. This Netherlands team, while it only has a handful of hits, it walked nine times, and we've just started the sixth. Two drilled back foul. For a fact, they've scored seven runs with just four hits to this point. That's it. Curacao has committed two errors in the field. The Netherlands has committed four. So it's been a wacky game at times. We'll do the two again. New Jersey and Hawaii on the U.S. side of the bracket. It's coming up next. That first pitch is going to be approximately 30 minutes after this one is over. 2-2 two -two for Mogan. Goes back to the curve, and there you go. Brewers works the count full. Kyer gets a big lead off of second. Payoff. Swing and a miss. Mogan gets Brewers, and there's one out. Selwyn Herkman's the two hitter is coming up next. Excellent pitch that time from Mogan. That change up. Got Brewers flailing. Looks like we got a pinch hitter, Devin Wagner. Replaces Herkman's. Pinch hitter for the Netherlands. Herkman's was 0 for 3 with a pair of strikes. First offering to Wagner, takes that for his... Wagner did not play yesterday, so this is first action in this League World Series. Oh, that one hits him. Curveball gets away from Mogan, so now two runners are aboard. That is the 10th base runner for the Netherlands to reach for a walk or... A hit batter, 10 times. So Wagner wears it. And now the meat of the Dutch order is coming up. Curacao ahead by four, and they have led for the entire of this one after jumping out to a 3 nothing lead in the second. Led by as many six runs, however, you've got the potential tying run on deck for the Netherlands. And so Charlton Marie recognizes the significance here of this game. And he's coming out to the mound to try to shape up his crew. And he wants Mogan to zone. You can see he's thrown 42 pitches. And he's missed out of the zone more often than not. And this game is really a really critical one. I've told you where the winner goes. The loser of this game winds up playing tomorrow in the elimination side of the bracket. So you'd have to play a third straight game. And factors in there is pitcher availability, pitch counts, etc. So the loser would then face New Zealand 
tomorrow at 1 Eastern. New Zealand lost to Co yesterday. So once you reach the elimination side of the bracket, you've got to win three games to get to the international championship. Oh, one. That's Rock through the right side. It's a base hit for Vondergraaf. Kyer gets the stop sign at third and a wise decision. Castillo played that in quickly and nicely. But the Dutch have the base loaded. And Tuan Healing represents the tying run. He's coming. Right through the hole on the right side. And we have got a big moment here in the sixth. Healing. Swings at the first pitch, bounces it through the hole. It's another hit. One run scores. Wagner gets the stop in third. It's station to station baseball now. Geeling has made it a run game. Just like Vondergroff, it's past the diving Riviere. With the infield in and the bags full, he's able to sneak down high. So the pitch now to Lorenzo Willem misses up high. And Willem has proved to be a pretty effective. Yesterday, he drove in a run with a double. He's walked three times in two games. Bags are full. Takes that for a strike. The potential go and run is at the plate for the Netherlands in the sixth inning. They have trailed for the entirety of this game and have been down by as many as six. One, and that one is bounced through the middle. It's a base hit. One run is in. The wave around third. The throw from Winkler way wide. It's a one game. Three straight scoring hits for the Netherlands. And they're not done. Willem sends this one right back where it curved up the middle. And so... Wagner scored easily. Vondergroff got the waiver third, and the throw was way wide of the plate. That allowed Keeling to get to third. Dying run is 90 feet away for the Netherlands. A resilient sequence here in the sixth, and really a game for Kenemerlin Little League out of Harlem. They've trailed by as many as five at one point this game. Then they trailed by six at one point. Here they are with the go-ahead run in scoring position. And remember, as the home team, all they would need to do is go ahead and close it out in the seventh. Easier said than done. Pitching change for Curacao. We'll tell you about the new pitcher right now. For Gently, Javanika is now on the mound after Mogan fell apart here in the sixth inning. There's still only one out, so the Netherlands, with a sacrifice fly even, would tie the score, theoretically. Javanika in a consequential spot. Geeling at third. Willem at second. After knocking in a pair with bases loaded, here we go. Now is Joris Mainsma. He's one for two. Waits on the first pitch. Mogan keeps it in front of him. Runners stay. It's a Netherlands rally in the sixth. And while down for the entirety of this game and by as many as six runs, they've been able to chip at the lead on several occasions. Curacao scored three in the second to go up three zip. Then the Dutch scored two home half of that inning. They were down seven to two before scoring three in the home fourth. And a big rally here. One one is hitting the air down the line. Ending towards the fence and out of play. With one out, a fly ball into medium uh, depth outfield will tie the score in essence 
Dominica, 16 year old pro Willemstad. He was on that 2019 Curacao team. It's the title game in Williamsport. Comes up in big times, according to the staff. Here's his one two. Way outside, gets away. Geeling stays put. At this JBO Sports Complex, there is a. It's a short backstop, but there's not much ground behind home plate. That's certainly favorite Curacao in this sequence. Here's the offering. Swing and a hard bouncer, but foul. A well-struck base hit might put the home team ahead in the sixth inning. Three runs are in. One more to tie it. 2-2. Two -two. That's outside. Out goes full. Matthias Schulte, Terhorst, waits on deck. So the Netherlands with just four entering the sixth inning. They have benefited from all walks today. Payoff. Swing. There's a fly ball. Down the field line. It's got some flight at the wall. Catch is made. Bears with a no! Off his mitt. The Netherlands are back on top. A dramatic Joris means a three-run blast. What a comeback. Barrels it up. It was a high fly up there for a while. And it looked like Wooters got his glove on it at least. He shows the umpire, I don't have it. Three run homer. Now at the base is empty, still just one. Thias Schulte to horse takes pitch out of the zone for ball one. The Netherlands with a six run sixth inning. The biggest rally at the right time. Their first lead of the day comes in crunch time. One to the right field. Away, ball two. Curacao has just come in control all day. That's what made this half inning so stunning. The Caribbean champs who rolled through the competition down in Stead earlier this month, led by as many as six. They had a six lead before the start of the home uh, fifth inning. Now, England scored two runs then and then posted a zero in the top half. And then the big here in the bottom of the sixth. Another walk. So that 11th walk by a Curacao pitcher. Make it the 10th pardon, but still way too many. The Netherlands still has a couple outs to work with here. This is the number eight hitter and the ninth man of the frame, Javon Vicario. Things and fouls it back. Vicario is the one Curacao born player on. Netherlands roster moved with his family to just outside of Amsterdam not long ago. He's originally from Tanya Curacao. He's walked today. Takes that for a strike. Netherlands had just four hit through the first five innings, yet they did seven runs thanks to ten walks that this team has drawn. They've stolen a few. They've been creative. 0-2. Oh, and that hits the bat. 
Wow, the continues for the Dutch. That's the second batter that's been hit today. Curacao pitcher. So that's now 12 hitters have reached on either a walk or a hit by pitch. And this got away from Jamanika. So here's Tristan Kyer, who started what could be the dramatic and decisive rally here in the sixth inning with, you get a walk. He walked at the whole second. Colin Brewer struck out, and then you start thinking there that Mogan was going to really start dialing it up. That's there for strike. That didn't happen. Mogan then hit Herkman's and allowed a base hit to Leifi Vondergroff. So that's how the Dutch loaded the bases with one out in this game. That one just a little too far outside. And then Twan Geeling and Enzo Willem each struck hard hit run scoring bait through the right side of the infield. That put the Dutch within a couple of runs and knocked Mo. Swing and a miss for strike three. Now there's two out in this sixth. Now back to the top of the order. Here's Brewers up for the second time. Kyer took a healthy hack at it. But uh, Javanika beat him. So at that point, it was an 11 to 10 game after the pitching change was made. First pitch in for a strike to Brewers. Jamanika came out and with two runners on allowed that dramatic, towering three homer to Mainzma that has the Netherlands ahead by two. A six run bottom sixth inning. Now the Dutch would love to add, but at this point they have flipped the script and they can close it. In the top half of the seventh inning, now they are three outs away from passing to the international semifinal. 0-2. Oh, and what a flip of the script it would be with Curacao leading all game and in pretty overwhelming fashion at times, but they've just left the door open with all these walks and a couple of errors as well. Offensively, this top of the seventh is going to be quite an adventure with the South hitters. One, two. Two, two, way outside. The runners hesitated. Do not have. And now the count goes full. Jamanika has got to find his own here. With another walk, you risk further damage by loading bases. A thriller to start today's action at Easley. They needed to move. Fans a pair. The Netherlands with a dramatic six run. Bottom of the sixth inning, close it out. And can advance to the international bracket semifinal on two for the win. Joris Mainsma put some respect in his name, the three run blast as the Netherlands ahead by two. Little League would like to extend a special thank you to its official sponsors like AIG Travel Guard and ADR Baseball. These companies provide year-round support to the Little League program, helping the communities and opportunities and experiences for families and communities alike. Little League would also like to thank its dedicated volunteers to make the program a special experience for millions of children around the world. Lee, South Carolina now knows about... Jar Mainsma, the left fielder with his team down a run in the bottom of the sixth inning and two runners on. Blast set, three run that has 
Harlem's Canaveral Little League. And three outs away from advancing to the international bracket semifinals. Leifi von der Graaf is the new pitcher on the mound for the Netherlands in seventh. Spots a fastball in for a strike to Gershon Mogan. Next one, Pickles over to Kyer, bounces. And the run is safe. So now the tying run for Curacao coming up in the seventh. Kyer, who started today on the mound, is their everyday shortstop. Just had trouble picking up that bouncing ball after it ricocheted off of Vondergroff's mitt. And then Cairo Hazel, who's now back at second base, beat the runner. Mogan's aboard. First pitch swinging. Ferenz bounces it through the right side. It's a base hit. Now flying run is on base. After two pitches, Kurosak has got two huge runs on that they need to score in order to either keep this game going or hit. Couple of bait hits to get things going. Wooters, what a day in the nine hole. He's four for four. And here's Curly Martha, a dangerous leadoff hitter for Curacao. Offense hasn't been the problem at all for the Caribbean champs. It's undoubtedly a overwhelming, relentless lineup. Martha three with an RBI single. Leifi Vondergroff is the fifth pitcher on the mound for the Netherlands today. And he drops the curve just a tad inside. We have got the heavy part of the order up now in a seventh inning. Here's the 1-0. Swing, and that's a blast. Deep left center. There it goes. One hops the fence. One definitely going to score. Here comes Wooters, the tying run. He's getting the wave. The plate. Not in time. We are tied again. Curacao caught a four-run lead in the bottom of the seventh. And in five here in the top half, they have tied it up. Martha hammered that one out to the gap in left center. His double scores a pair. Just like that, all it took was five pitches for Curacao to retie this thing. Now it's Zerdrick Profar, the number two hitter. Fastball outside corner for a strike. Second, a little low, Hazel smothers it. Wing. That one is drilled foul down the line. These Curacao hitters, they are pick the baseball here from Vondergroff. They have tied it. After just three batters have come to the plate here. 0-2. Stad poke through the right side. That's a base hit. Schulter to horse up with it. Might turn around third, but the runner is held. So Martha stays at Pays pro far with his first hit of the day. The first four batters have reached with base hits here in the seventh against the Dutch. And Von looks like he might need some medical attention on the mound.
Joey Tigner, the uh, first base umpire who he wanted to allow Vondergroff and his man for a moment just to see if he was okay to continue. He was hunched up there, hands on his knees for a quick moment. Quite a tense spot now because the go ahead for Curacao is at first base. Pardon me, third base. Vonder Groff is. To keep battling. Thirteen up. In a very exciting and compelling game of the day. Deshandro Trump, Curacao's three hitter, has a pair of hits today, and he's also drove in a pair of runs. Nobody out in the top half of the seventh. And again, a fly ball now would put the visiting team back ahead. First pitch is high. Ball one. One oh is fouled off the mitt. Thirteen runs and sixteen hits for Curacao. Sixteen hits as a team. They've got several extra base hits, including two balls. And what a response from a team that took quite a gut punch in the bottom of the sixth. This is high, two balls in a And they strike back immediately. They tied the game up after just five pitches here at the top of the set. First four hitters have all reached. And now a favorable count to Chandro Trump. Three one, swing. That one is looped over to short. Kyer picks it up. First, there's one out. And he caught it. He caught it. And they doubled up the runner at first. Oh wow! The runner was on the move. Kyer makes the catch. He got it cleanly and then recognized that they could double up the runner. Two outs. But now the cleanup hitter, Payson Riviere, with the most important base runner still sitting at third base. That's Martha. Vondergroff delivers. 1 0, wave and a miss. That was a good pitch for Riviere to hit. He's 3 for 3 today with a pair of singles and an all high triple. 1 1. Fights the curveball off. And the Netherlands is miraculously a strike away from somehow getting to the bottom of the seventh. Go ahead, third. One, two with two outs. Here it comes. This has had so many dramatic, intense sequences. Add this to the growing list. Vondergroff coming home. Swing, that one pop. Out to right. Schultz to horse underneath it. Got it. 
Wow, Netherlands dodges a huge bullet, but Curacao ties things up. And we will go to the bottom of the seventh, 13 all. Third up as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning of a seven inning regulation game, day two at the Senior League World Series. Winner of this one goes international bracket, semifinal game on Tuesday. Loser, elimination side, and has to play their way all the way back, facing elimination the rest of the tournament. Curacao with a clutch two in the top half of the seventh, but they left the possible go-ahead run at third base in the top half of that frame. The Netherlands, after scoring six runs in the home sixth, now send the heart of the order to the plate in the bottom of the seventh, and it will face for gently Jamaica once again. He came out of the pen and allowed the three-run home run Ainsma that put the Dutch ahead by two at the time. Obviously, Curacao responded. And so this thrilling opener to today's action presses on into the bottom of the seventh. Will we have a walk-off? Or is Curacao going to force extras? First pitch on the way, and it's in for a strike. Tristan Kyer leads off the bottom of the seventh. Fouls that one away, and the counts. Swing and a miss, strike three. A big out for Jamani. So one away in the bottom of the... And Leifi Vondergroff is up next. Vondergroff was on the mound there in the top half of the seventh. And while allowed two runs, he locked in and got out of the jam. Swings and misses. That critical double play ball proved to be the big difference in the inning because it was sitting at third base with nobody out, representing the go-ahead run for Curacao. But runners were at the corners, and on a line drive out caught by Kyer, they the runner at first. And that quickly gave the home team two outs. And then Riviere flew out to right to end the threat. And Curacao left the what could have been the go-ahead and maybe winning run at third base. Will that come back to bite him? Here's the one-two. Just a little too far off the plate. Two, two. Swing, that one is lifted foul, out of play. Keep in mind, when this one is over, 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one, we have a matchup of the East and West region champs, the U.S. side of the bracket. That's Hawaii and New Jersey. Two, two. Fouled away, so Von Krav keeps the battle going. Two popped up. Playable in the shallow center. And it might not even reach the grass. It does. So Martha makes the catch. Two gone. And Curacao is one out away from forcing extras. 
Boy, both teams have just been swinging and jabbing, ducking and swinging, and it has been like a boxing match at times. Curious had been ahead for essentially the entirety of the game until the bottom of the sixth. And Quincy Virginia is going to make a change. For gently, Chamanica hands the baseball up to Jerving Royer. The 15 year old from Willemstad on the mound, aiming to retire the lefty. Up man, Twan Geeling with two outs in the bottom of the seventh. If he does, we will go to extra innings. Curacao will have five, six, and seven due up in a possible eighth inning. But first, we got to get there. So, Jamanika came bullpen there with one out in the sixth inning he allowed the three-run homer to but eventually got out of the inning by striking out a couple of players. he wound up striking out three and an inning in a third but here we go. bottom seven two outs nobody on Jerving Royer. Put home. Two seamer catches the outside corner for a strike. Geeling singled it in the sixth. Walked, struck out twice. They're keep way to the big lefty. 0-2. Too far outside. Are we headed to extras? There's two twos on the way. Fastball reached out and missed strike three. Curacao, after falling behind for the first time all day in the sixth inning, scores twice in the top half and four extras with Moby. We are going to extra. After Curacao strikes for two in the top half, seventh to tie things up at 13. Tuan Geeling struck, swinging to retire the side in the bottom half, seventh. And you saw the reaction after the swing and mid. Kirsch and Mogan. Curacao starting is being helped off the field and into the dugout. He was favoring his right leg after squeezing that last pitch. He actually pulled to the ground there, right outside of plate. And hey, it's hot, it's humid. This could be a cramp situation, but unless Mogan gets better here, he. Curacao may have to make a defensive change behind the plate. So we wish him the best. Meanwhile, Vondergraaf is back on the mound for the eighth inning. Now, he allowed two runs in the top half of the seventh to Curacao, but then he tightened up and was able to get out of the jam, and he stranded what would have been a winning run for Curacao at third base. So our first game of this tournament that is reached extra. The eighth inning, by the way, is played under normal and regulations. 
We play just like we did the first seven innings. Bear in mind, beginning with the top of the ninth, a runner will be placed at second base. And now, who would that runner be? It's just the last it out of the prior inning for each team. So that happens in the ninth if we reach that point. Just like they do, of course, at the major level, a runner would be placed at second base, which creates all sorts of interest compelling scenarios. Clay Winkar, he's hitless today, but he has driven in a run. Steps in, into the box to begin the top half of the eighth. What a wild finish to this one. Curacao took an 11 to 5. And it'd be close to the finish line. First pie to Wink Floor. But then the Netherlands, just like it had done several times earlier, chipped away. They scored runs in the bottom of the fifth. So that made it an 7 game. And then, for the first time since the opening inning, the Dutch held Curacao off the board in the top half of the sixth. So that was buzzing with some excitement. Ronda Groff deals. This is out five. So at that point, the Netherlands goes to bat in the bottom of the sixth round, 11 to seven. And then they six runs to pull ahead 13 to 11. There goes Mogan, by the way. He is on one of the golf carts there. Looks like he's going to be driven not just away from the dugout, away from the field of play to maybe receive further medical attention. Here's the 3-1. That's a walk. So Curacao with the leadoff walk. You never want that to happen. And even further so, three innings. So Curacao has the leadoff and on. For a fifth straight inning. They have scored in two frames. Probably the, the scariest and most dangerous fence. Tournament field, at, at least at a minimum on the international side. Mario on the mound. And after the quick conversation is third baseman and pitcher. They go to work against Shendrian Marcus. Takes a strike. You just saw Marcus's numbers. The bottom half of the order for Curacao been excellent. Martinez has a three hit day. So does Ferenz Wu, number nine hitter. There's a 1 1. Or the 0 1 pitch, rather. This is upstairs. Tinas, a starter on that 2019 Williamsport team, that the championship game, has only further developed and improved. His brother, Myro Shrek, an 18 year old in the Dodgers organization right now. So he has got some professional free in the family. His brother's actually with the Dodgers ball club in Arizona. Undoubtedly one of his top international signings two years ago. With the go-ahead run at first, here's the three run to Martinez. Takes it at the knees. And that was a second. Our home plate umpire Todd Sachs, he had inadvertently Called it strike three. So Martinez knew there that should be full count. And yeah, that one clearly caught the knees. Andre Groff in the meantime checks on Winklar. Two 
Acre inning affair. Dutch on Dutch battle. Here's the 3-2. Martinez drops that one back up the middle of base hit. Winkler advances to second. And so the go-ahead run for Curacao sits at second base. Nice piece of hitting for Martinez. He only further shows you his hitting prowess. Now a four-hit day for Martinez. Nathan Castillo next. You know, the buzz starts to build at the stadium. The New Jersey-Hawaii game was supposed to have start 30 minutes ago. Original start time was 12 noon. That game backed up now as we push into extras. Castillo tries to bunt. It's popped up. Vicario reaches. Sacrifices the body there to try to make the play, but he could not get uh, on the fly. Wonderful. Stretches out, almost got to it. Great recognition, uh, re uh, recognition too. Tough sometimes to pick up the baseball that quickly. That's a balk. The runners advance. I think right there, yep. He shuffled that left. He knew it. Runners advance. Sherman Gario wants to clarify the Aruba native himself who moved to the net when he was a teenager. We are tied at 13 all in extras. After Curacao had led by as many as six runs, they lost the lead, then tied things back up at the top of the seventh. And after a quiet home half, here we are in extras. And now the go-ahead run is back at third base again. Caribbean champs. The 0-1. About to be on the way to Castillo. Swing. Bounces it. Past the diving Kyer. That's through. One run is in. Tinas gets the wave. Throw to the plate. Is offline. A two-run score. For Curacao in extras. Two run single for Castillo. And this offense is relentless. With the infield in, no time for Kyer to make the play. A great effort. This Curacao offense means business. Every up and down the batting order can beat you. And now eight of the nine Curacao hitters have hit safely. Everybody has reached safely. Winkler, the only man without a hit, still left. And, well, pitching change. Vonder is out. And Sherman calls on Jelly Vonderham with Curacao back ahead by two, a timeout in the eighth inning. Jelly Vonderham replaces Leif Vondergroff on the mound. Top of the eighth inning, still out, and Curacao is punching right back. After the Netherlands sprung for six runs in the home sixth inning, Curacao Score twice to tie things, force extras, and now they got the lead again. A dangerous, relentless lineup for the Caribbean champs. 15 runs and counting. 
And they've got a man sitting at first base. That's Nathan Castillo. And the new hitter, Geno Suarez. He replaces Jim Mogan in the batting order who left the field earlier, suffering what looked like an injury to his right leg. That's Castillo scoring position. One out for the Dutch. But here comes, undoubtedly, the most effective and productive hitter today. Their order, Ferenz Wooters, the number nine hitter for Curacao. So this does his job. Now batting number 13, Ferenz Wooters. I would love to add another. Because the Netherlands have, they have scored multiple runs in four innings this game. Wooters blasts it foul. Boy, he has been a presence in the nine hole. He's driven in three run. He cleared the bases with a triple in his first at bat back in the second. Singles since. He's stolen two paces. He's also scored three runs. He's done just about everything. Now, can he grow his team's lead? Perhaps with another base hit. And will it be a five hit day for Renz Wooters, the 16 year old from St. Michael? With just a town over from Willemstad. That one's up high. Meanwhile, Jelly Vonderham is the sixth pitcher that the Netherlands has used. Today. They started with Tristan Kyer, then Roden Smith, Feta Oostveen, Thomas Smith, and then Vondergraaf previously. 1 1. Yeah, Wooters was sitting on that one. Blasts it deep to right. What's the fence? That chase is another run in. Castillo scores. Ferenz Wooters on his way to third. The throw beats him. And the tag beats well. Curacao pulls ahead three, but there are two outs. Yeah, just. Dead red sitting on that one, a pitch up in the zone, and he drilled it. So it's a He'll wind up perhaps a home run shy of the cycle. Curious out. It, it just feels now maybe like it might be insurmountable. He got massive, and that's going to hurt. Let's see how much, though. Here's Martha. The leadoff hitter takes that one high. Two balls and no strikes. You know, if Curacao does ultimately win this game, Martha turns on it, puts it down the left field line. That's a base hit. So it would be 17 to 13 now, you'd think. I, I think with Wooters' speed, he probably scores from second. Regardless, it's the 20th hit of the game for Curacao. And Curly Martha is three for five today. He's been on base his last four plate appearances. Yeah, that, that definitely brings Wooters home. So here comes Zerdrick Pro. This leads me back to my prior point. This one rolled on the ground left side. Diving stop by Willem. He gets up. Feed, throws out the runner. Nicely done. Curacao builds a three run lead. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and the Netherlands needs one last miraculous comeback in extras. Player back out of the mound to close it down. Next. Curacao with three to the top of the eighth inning, and now they're three outs away from winning this. Chaotic extra inning marathon. New catcher working with Jerving Royer. That Suarez who replaces Gershon Mogan, who had to be taken off the field at the end of the bottom of the seventh. He caught the third strike from tw uh, after Twan Geeling swung missed. But as he was twisting his body to jump out of his stance and run back to the Caribbean dugout, he tweaked something. 
in his uh, right leg there because he fell to the uh, pretty slowly. It was nothing sudden. And he started reaching at the right leg, so he had to be helped off the field. And he has actually been taken on a golf cart away from the field. So with Mogan out, it's behind the plate. Anywho, Netherlands needs one more miraculous come. This is Lorenzo Willem, and he takes a first pitch strike from Royer. Counts nothing in one. You saw the wacky-looking line score. The game Curacao had led for the large amount of this one. Willem sloped to his counterpart. Trop throws him out. One away. Curacao took a four-run lead into the bottom sixth inning. They at that point led 11 to 7. Only to watch the Netherlands pull ahead with a six run bottom of the sixth. But then they struck right back with two clutch runs in the top of the seven. Royer threw a easy two, three home seven. And after three runs in the top of the eighth inning, away from advancing to the international bracket semifinal. There's Jarthma, who hit that three-run homer to put the Dutch up at the time. 1-1. Now, he hit that homer off of for the Jamanika. He has since been replaced by Royer. 2-1. That one's pulled. The third, Trump handles it across the diamond. Strong throw. And Sal is one out away. No doubles defense. Well done. Trump was right on the chalk. And Curacao with its 16 runs and 20 hit. One out away now. This is Matthias. Takes her horse, takes it high. This offense is one that should be feared this week. In 1-0. Now the Netherlands in their win yesterday over Canada, they won 11 to one, five innings. Today, Curacao scores 16 against them. That's a swing and a rip into left. That's down. Big Clark comes over to play it. Schulte Terhorst keeps this game alive. Javon Vicario, the expected hit up next. One could make the case that these might be the two best teams on the international side of the bracket. We haven't seen Australia play yet. It plays later today for the first time. Mexico, the only other winner on the international. Yesterday, a 4-1 win over New Zealand. Here's Vicario. He swings, barrels it up, but it's in the air and play for Winkler. Got it. Ball game over. Wild, chaotic, wacky one that sees Curacao lose a lead it had held all game, only to see them bounce back things, force extras, and score the decisive three to the top half of the eighth inning. It's a 16 to three. Extra inning win, one in which it had to work for it against the Netherlands team that found ways to keep punching back inning after inning. But indeed, this uh, little league program from Willemstad <laughs> with a little celebration advances to face the winner. Australia and Mexico. That game later today, scheduled for a 5 p.m. Eastern first pitch, depending on when our next game finishes. That one would get going. And Curacao plays winner on Tuesday. Evening right here at East. Hope you enjoyed it for our entire great crew. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald saying so long for now from Easley. Coming up next. East and West region champs from the United States, New Jersey, and Hawaii battle next. First pitch time likely around 115 or 120 Eastern.
So we will talk to you then. So long for now. In Easley, the site of the Senior League World Series.